So hello everybody, I'm Laila Matha. I'm going to talk to you today about the potential of community-led total sanitation. It's a very exciting innovation that was pioneered in 2000 by Dr. Kamal Kar, and it's really spread rapidly, it's exciting, it has potential to address the sanitation crisis and also address all sorts of other issues that I'm going to talk about today. Sanitation has only recently received attention in the last five, six years or so, and that in itself is interesting, given its central role in global public health. So in my brief talk today, I'm going to talk about the sanitation crisis and why it matters. I'll then talk to you a little about community-led total sanitation and introduce it to in its dynamics, and then finally turn to some of the challenges and wider lessons. Okay, so shit happens and shit matters. Why do you think I've used the title? I think community-led total sanitation has really highlighted that it's okay to talk about shit and it's made shit sexy because it actually uses the term shit either as shit or in, in its different local expressions in different languages. So it's really a compelling issue because all over the world, 2,000 children often die every day due to poor sanitation, hygiene and water issues. And there are lots of statistics from the World Health Organization that show how the health sector could save billions of dollars in treatment costs and people could gain lots of productive days due to reduced diarrheal disease. But despite these glaring statistics, sanitation has been very, very neglected. And even though there's been lots and lots of global action around water and sanitation in the, in the last decades, there was the, in the whole 1980s, there was the global decade around water and sanitation. Sanitation has largely been a poor cousin and it's um, water that has received most of the attention. And finally, past interventions have tended to be very technical, top-down, and they haven't really paid enough attention to people's local needs and wants. And that's something we've done a lot of work on here um, at the Institute of Development Studies and indeed in the STEP Center. Another reason why sanitation matters and why it is important to take shit seriously is that sanitation is not just linked to uh, one MDG or Millennium Development Goal, that is the Water and Sanitation MDG, but it's linked to several Millennium Development Goals. It has a potential to reduce child mortality, address maternal health, combat other major illnesses, diseases, etc. And little wonder then that in 2007, the British Medical Journal voted for sanitation as the greatest medical advance in the last 150 years. So a lot of people often assume that it's very easy to educate people. You know, it's just all about, first it was get the education right. Let's tell people. So it was top-down public health kind of interventions to educate people. Now people realize that things run much deeper. There are old habits that die hard. People often like to go out and defecate in the open. They don't necessarily want to use a little smelly toilet like the one I've shown here. So in some ways, tackling behavior change is, is very, very difficult. And billions of dollars have been spent of toilets that people don't use. These toilets are used um, as storage. They are opened up only when visitors arrive from the city, etc. So it's a, it's a very, very difficult issue. So what is CLTS? CLTS is a very powerful participatory approach and it draws on participatory methodology to do a whole host of things. It really seeks to use a bottom-up approach to get people to analyze their own sanitation situation and also take on board the spread of fecal-oral contamination in a local community. It was pioneered by Dr. Kamal Kaur in 2000 in Bangladesh. He is a development consultant who had years and years of experience around livestock, around agriculture. And when he was evaluating a sanitation project in northwestern Bangladesh, he realized that actually people were not really interested in using the toilets because it was very top down, because it was hardware driven. And he really thought that one needs to change things. He's a very, very inspiring figure. And it's amazing because he has single-handedly, or now with lots of people, but he initially started on his own, really rolling out CLTS from northwest Bangladesh, and now it's being practiced all over the world. CLTS draws on strong emotions such as humor, disgust, and shame, and self-analysis. And the idea is that everybody in this community is ingesting each other's shit. So once you basically realize that, you, base, you change your behavior, but it's a more organic behavior change. It's not something that is imposed from above. And the reason why it's community-led 
is and total sanitation is because then there has to be a collective resolve on the part of the local community to stop open defecation. People are encouraged to build their own toilets and this is without upfront hardware subsidy because the logic was that uh, these upfront hardware subsidies had failed. People were not really using them. So CLTS draws on many, many different techniques and approaches. So one thing is, for example, this transit walk. You get the community together, uh, different members of the community, and you, you walk along and you find the shit, the stuff. People actually see that how contaminated their surroundings are. And you also see that in some ways it's, it's not just your quote-unquote ingesting each other's shit, but even your sources of water are getting com contaminated. So apart from transect walks, there is mapping. So communities get together, there's a meeting, and in a well-facilitated so-called triggering, villagers get together and they calculate the household shit. You also look at where people shit and who is doing it. And then you use different sort of uh, bottom-up techniques to get people to realize that they've got to stop this process. Now, of course, all this looks very good on paper. And indeed, if you uh, look at a triggering, a so-called triggering exercise, on the day, it's very powerful, but there are lots of questions that one needs to ask. Who in the community is actually participating? Do we really get all the people and community members on board? So there are obviously some questions that can ask, but in some ways the approach is, is quite powerful because it unleashes a lot of powerful emotions and it gets communities to, to get going. Where is CLTS now? Its spread has been remarkable. It's been massive. It's currently rolled out in over 60 countries and the outreach has been in over 100 countries. Many countries around the world have adopted CLTS explicitly in their sanitation strategy and it's used as an entry point to address several Millennium Development Goals and also enhance livelihoods. Today, CLTS is considered to be a development success story, and it's also a key approach in the sector used by several donors. For example, UNICEF, the Water and Sanitation Program, the Water Supply and Sanitation Collaborative Council, as well as several bilateral agencies. Now, obviously, a lot of it is because of a very, very inspiring, charismatic pioneer, but he's worked with many, many other people who played a key role. So I've already mentioned some of the agencies that have played a key role. It has also been rolled out a lot by international NGOs, like, for example, WaterAid, Plan and others. But what's been key is how the spread took place. So it started in Bangladesh and then the Water and Sanitation Program, as well as other donors, DFID and others, organized learning and exchange programs. So, for example, there were exchange visits for officials from the region that went to Bangladesh and then gradually moved to India, to Indonesia. In the last decade or so or less, um, regional sanitation conferences have also played a key role. So, for example, Sakusan, Afrikasan. And now there's sort of a global movement around this approach and around, indeed, in the sanitation community, there's been a lot of research, networking, action learning. It's important to bear in mind that the process of spread and going to scale is extremely diverse and each country has had its own experiences. So in some countries, the rollout has been state driven, for example, in India, in Indonesia and in other countries, NGOs have played a key role. What's been key is also the role of barefoot workers as well as trainers and facilitators in rolling out community-led total sanitation. You really do need very good, high-quality facilitation to get the community on board. Our research also found that this approach really needs champions. So it will be successful in one area, in one district of a country, and really fail miserably somewhere else. And this may be because of a charismatic chief, a charismatic bureaucrat, etc. So the champion actually plays a key role. The institution in which it is housed also seems to play a key role. We actually found that in countries where the Ministry of Health champions sanitation, it has a higher rate of success than, for example, if it is rolled out by rural development ministries. So this was the case, for example, in Indonesia. The Ministry of Health championed it, and that really seemed to work very well. CLTS, at least in its purest form, has a sort of no upfront hardware subsidy policy. But there are different experiences of subsidies, and subsidies play a different role. So you could actually be subsidizing things like, quote-unquote, software, facilitation, institutional development. And each country and different projects and approaches have 
different experiences with subsidies. The different funded research projects going to scale the potential of community-led total sanitation explored many of these issues and the findings can be found in the book Shit Matters, which was edited by myself and Cinemovic. The book has very interesting chapters on detailed case studies by various researchers and partners of the project and focuses on Indonesia, India and Bangladesh. In the next part, we will look at the dynamics of CLTS and also some of the challenges.